to the most high God and bless his holy name. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's give him adoration. Let's bless the king of kings. Let's bless the Lord of lords. Let's bless the only one who can do marvelous things. Let's, let's give him glory. Praise him. Worship him. Adore him. Magnify his holy name. Thank you, my father. You're worthy, you're worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. Now I want you to lift your voice to the Almighty God loud and clear and say, Father, Father on this new ground, do something new in my life right now. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. 
My Father and my God, on this new ground, do something new in my life right now, right now, right now. Almighty God, on this new ground, do something new in my life, something unforgettable, something you haven't done before, something mighty. Something that will show the world that truly you are the Almighty. Please do something new in my life today, Lord. And your name will be glorified. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Amen. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor, amen. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Ancient of days, we give you all the glory. The all-sufficient God will give you all the glory. The one who never grows old will give you all the glory. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. My Father, my God, on this new ground, let a new dawn begin in all our lives. In the life of the blessed family, that kind of blessing that they will say, God, this is becoming too much. Release to them today. Amen. Individually, bless them beyond measure. Amen. As families, bless them beyond measure. Amen. As a congregation, as a family of God, bless them beyond measure. Amen. That kind of blessing, they can't even dream possible now, my Father and my God, before this time next year, let them begin to enjoy it. Do marvelous things today. Glorify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. I shake hands with one or two people and say, neighbor, I love you. But today, my miracle will be bigger than yours. And neighbor, I love you. But today, my miracle will be bigger than yours. And if you believe that, then let me hear you shout a big hallelujah. And please be seated. I just want to thank the Almighty God for the blessed family. You are doing new things. And God will be doing new things in your life. Uh, you brought me from the camp now to the venue with an helicopter. Even though you hire it, by next year, you won't have to hire. At least one of you would have bought his own. Oh, oh. Oh, who is that fellow? Let that fellow shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
1998, we had Lekki 98. Well, uh, you engineers, the choir, they love you so much. That's why they are clapping for you. In 1998, we had Lekki 98, which then was the largest gathering of human beings on earth. It was the beginning of the Congress, Holy Ghost Congress. Today, we are having Lekki 18. And the greatest miracle God had ever performed is going to perform in the life of someone. Yeah. I rejoice with you. Amen. I saw the crowd that were still on the road as we were driving. They were enough to feel TBS. And then I got here and I saw that this place is already packed. The devil is angry. And it shows that God is on your side. Let me hear somebody shout hallelujah. Psalm 121. From verse 1 to 2. Psalm 121. 1 to 2. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Today we want to talk very briefly on help from above. The Almighty God may declare that you should not expect help from below. Don't expect your help from man. Jeremiah chapter 17 Verse 5 to 6, Jeremiah 17, 5 to 6 says, Cursed is the man who trusts in man, who has made the arm of flesh his strength. Don't put your trust in man. Man will fail you. But he says you should put your trust in God. Expect your help from him. And then you'll be blessed. Jeremiah 17 Verse 7 to 8. Jeremiah 17, 7 to 8. Now the beauty of expecting help from on high is that according to John chapter 3, verse 31, John 3, verse 31, he that is from above is above all. And the one that you are to lift up your eyes to today is the one who says in Isaiah 66 verse 1, Isaiah 66 verse 1, he says, heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Some people are also clapping for the engineers of my extreme left. Uh, engineers, the Lord will bless you mightily. Nobody should trek all this distance and be denied their blessing because some people didn't allow them to hear. The one who is above, and is above all, controls everything below. He controls kings. The Bible says the heart of kings are in his hand. And he turns it whichever way it wills, like you would turn rivers. Proverbs 21, verse 1. He controls everything above. Angels, birds, the wind. The wind and the sea obey him. He's the controller of all. But what I want to really talk to you about for the next few minutes, and the minutes will be few, because when God wants to perform a miracle, he does it suddenly. Long before I finish, your breakthrough would have come. 
because he is above. He can pick you from the graveyard and bring you to life. In John chapter 11, verse 39 to 45, John 11, 39 to 45, he brought somebody who has been in the grave for four days out of the grave. All he had to do is speak a word. Because the one who is above is also called the resurrection and the life. John 11, verse 25. So I want to decree to someone today that if your business had been dead, today it will come out of the grave. If your marriage is already dying, it will come back to life. And if the enemy think that they have already buried your destiny because of the one who lives on high, that destiny will come back to life today. <clears throat> but you can do better than that. There might be some people who are not dead, but they are in a pit. Business-wise, the business is not completely dead, but they are loaded with burdens of debt. They are in a pit. It can bring you out of the pit and put you on level ground. Because in Psalm 40, verse 1 to 3, Psalm 40, verse 1 to 3, he said, he brought me out of the merry clay and then set my feet on the rock to stay. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings 4, verse 1 to 7, there was a woman who was dead. The children were not dead, but she was so deep in debt that the creditors wanted to sell her children to pay for their debt. But the one who is above <clears throat> stretched forth his mighty hand from above and pulled her out so that she never had to bear, borrow again. I had a testimony not too long ago, I think I've shared it with some of you, of one of my partners who said she came to a partner's meeting last year. And there I prayed that God miraculously with help people to pay their debts. And after that meeting, those he was who he called him. How are you going to pay the debt to us? And he said, I don't know. Ah, they said, you have to know. He said, because if I pay you a million naira for every day that I've been alive, I won't be able to finish paying. So they said, in that case, we cancel your debt. I decree today to somebody here, if you are in debt before the end of this year, you'll be debt free. If today you are in the valley, financially speaking, success speaking, progress speaking, the one from above will bring you out of the valley and put you on level ground in Jesus' name. But then he can do more than that. He can pick you from the valley and put you on the hilltop. You see, that's the, 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 I will lift my eyes onto their hills. The one on the hill, they are the one the almighty God can pick you from the level ground and put you on the hilltop. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, Verse 7 to 8, 1 Samuel 2, 7 to 8, the Bible tells us that he can pick up a beggar from the dunghill and cause him to begin to sit among princes. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1, he picked up a man called Elijah. Elijah was a nobody. His family was nothing. That's why when they said Elijah the Tisbite of the inhabitants of Gilead, 
they did not mention his father's name because they amounted to nothing. But the Almighty God lifted him up and put him at a level where he can command the heavens to shut. And God saw to it that his word was obeyed. There might be somebody here today, nobody knows you. Nobody thinks you can become anything. But in the name that's above every other name, because you came today, you will soon be sitting on the hilltop. But he can do even better than that. He can pick you from the hilltop and put you on the mountain. He can move you from glory to glory according to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. He says he can move us from glory to glory. Now, in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 17, 2 Kings 4, verse 8 to 17, the Bible talked about a woman, and God called the woman a great woman. She was great, but she had no child. So even in all her greatness, there was still something missing. Until the one from on high reached out to her. And all of a sudden, the one who was called great became greater. I know there are some of you who are here today that are already great. And I am decreeing the name that's above every other name. You will become greater. I've told you the story before of a meeting I had in, in, somewhere here in Ekoi. And some mighty people used to invite me once a, a year to come and do Bible study for them. Only mighty people go there. But one day, one small boy just managed to sneak in. When I finished preaching, he came to me and said, Sir, I've never heard this kind of preaching before. And so I want to bless you. And he gave me $10,000. I prayed for him. I said, well, next time will be more. He said after he left, he was wondering, what kind of pastor is this? I gave him $10,000. He must be very greedy. He said, next time will be more. But the following year, he came. And he said, now I understand your prayer. Because last year, when I came to this meeting, I had only 11 petrol stations. He's a small boy. He had only 11 petrol stations. He said, but now I have 110. In the name that's above every other name, you may be great now. Before this time next year, you'll be far, far greater. And God can do even greater things. He can move you from the mountain to the sky. In Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, Isaiah 40 verse 31, he says he will give you wings of eagles so that you can fly into the sky. In Acts chapter 8, for example, if you read from verse 39 to 40, Acts 8 from verse 39 to 40. The Bible tells us of how the almighty God caused Philip to travel by the Holy Spirit. He got him flying into the sky. There are some of you who are already on the mountain top. There might be one or two here, for example, that if they were to threatening to withdraw their money from a bank, the manager will catch cold. But you haven't seen anything yet. There is a God in the heavens who will pick you from where you are now and take you to where you are flying. I was sharing with some of my children not too long ago. There were people who considered themselves mighty. And I told them, I know you are wealthy. And I thank God for your being wealthy. But there's something greater than being wealthy. It is called being prosperous. 
And I told them the story of a man who went for a walk, money walk. He was on holiday in England, and he decided to go for a money walk. And he went with his uh, bodyguards. And then he saw a factory, big factory, where they make Rolls Royce. But as every factory is, the factory was dirty. So he asked his people, what, what factory is that? They said, that's where they make Rolls Royce. He said, uh-uh. You mean that's where they make the car I ride? And it's as dirty as this? He said, let's branch. So he branched there and said he wanted to see the owner of the factory. So they, they met. And he told the man, I want to buy your factory. That man looked at him and said, are you sure you are well? <laughs> I make Rolls Royce. Only the top people in the world buy my product. Who told you I am poor? Who told you I need? He said, listen, sir. I will make you an offer you can't refuse. Sit down. Calculate your profit for the next 10 years. Add it to the cost. And I pay you right here. He went for a walk. He came back home with a factory. So, so, so you understand what I'm talking about. There is somebody here today. You are already on the mountain. Before this time next year, you'll be flying. Yeah. And then, thank you. God can do even better than that. That's why you need to look up high. Don't limit your vision. You see, the one who is on high is above all. You know, it can take you from the sky to heaven. When you hear that the sky is the limit, that's not for children of God. The sky is not your limit. Your limit is heaven. In 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 12, from verse 2 to 4, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 2 to 4, Paul told us how God took him to the third heavens. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 to 23, Ephesians 1, 19 to 23, he tells us that Jesus Christ is seated far above all principalities and powers. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, Ephesians 2, verse 6, the Bible tells us that the Almighty God has raised, up to, uh, raised us up together with Him. And we are sitting with Him in the heavenly places. The Almighty God's plan for your life is not to limit you to the sky, it's to take you all the way to heaven. So when David said, I lift my eyes, to the heavens. I leave my eyes to the hills for whence cometh my help. It means I am making up my mind that I'm going to link up myself to the one who will make me far, far, far above anyone. He was a shepherd boy. By the time God finished with him, he was not just a king. He became the father of the king of kings. I've always told my children, whenever they see something doing something great in the redeemed presence of God, they will say, ah, glory be to God, we have arrived. And I've always told them, we haven't started. And I'm telling the blessed family, you have not started. I'm telling you in the name that's above every other name that by this time next year, one of you will already be chasing a thousand. And 10 of you will be chasing 10,000. In the name that's above every other name, your journey to the top will never cease. God will move you higher and higher. He will take you to greater heights. From this moment onward, any time I hear concerning you, it will be from a higher height. Let me conclude. How do I access this help? How do I get myself linked up to the one who can 
raise the dead, who can pick somebody from a pit and put him on level ground, who can pick somebody on the level ground and put him on a hill, who can pick somebody from a hill and move him onto mountain top, who can pick somebody from the mountain top and cause him to fly, who can take you from the sky and take you all the way to heaven. How do I access this helper? In Matthew 15, verse 21 to 28, Matthew 15, verse 21 to 28, a woman came to Jesus Christ and fell at his feet. I said, help me. I need help. I know you can do all things. Jesus Christ said, yes, I can, but I can give the bread of children to dogs. The power is there. I can perform any form of miracle. I can do the impossible. But it's not for those who are not my children. The woman fell at his feet. I said, I agree I am a dog, but I surrender to you. And as she surrendered, the miracle that belonged to children was made available to her. I have good news for someone here today who will say, I surrender all to Jesus. The impossible will become possible for you. The irreversible will be reversed for you. It takes complete and absolute surrender to him. Because if the one who wants to pull you out reaches out his hand to pull you out and you are shaking, he will drop you. But if you surrender, he will pick you up and take you to the mountain top and from the mountain to the sky and then from the sky to heaven. I told you a story before and with this I close. A woman was pregnant and the baby died in her womb. The baby stopped moving for almost a week before she went to the hospital to find out what's going on. And they told her, oh, the baby had been dead for at least three days. And that they must evacuate quickly because the baby by now will be rotting. She said, thank you very much for your report. I know the Congress is coming. I'm going to attend the Congress. It was a week before the Congress. If God does not do something for me during the Congress, I can come back, you can do your evacuation. <laughs> they laughed at her. You wait another one week, you are dead. Because the, the baby would have become rotten, the poison inside of you will kill you. She came to the Congress. The first day of the Congress, nothing happened. Not, God didn't refer to her case at all. The second day, nothing happened. The third day, there are some elders here who remember that occasion. The power of God came down so mightily, I couldn't stand. I had to ask for a chair on the pulpit. I sat down. But as I was about to sit down, God spoke. I said, there's a woman here. The baby in your womb has been dead for more than one week. The baby is coming back to life. Instantly. The baby jumped back to life. Instantly. Brethren, there is a God who can pick you up from the graveyard. And that baby today now is getting ready to go to Bible college. He can pick you from the grave and turn you to somebody who will be flying all over the world proclaiming his name. But your surrender to him must be absolute. It must be complete. So let's, let me start by calling those of you who have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus Christ to come. Come to my Jesus. He will save your soul. He will give you a brand new beginning. And then everything will become new for you. And so I'm going to count from 1 to 12 because I know some of you are very far away. But before I say 12, if you want to surrender your life to this one, 
who is the power on high, who can do anything. Before I say 12, come and stand before me. I'm counting now. One. Two. And if you are coming, you have to come fast because my time is running out. Three. Those of you who are clapping, you are clapping for Jesus. Thank you, your hand will never be empty. Uh, but clap as if you really mean it. Four. Five. Oh, there is a power that is above all powers. Come and be linked up with him. And everything will change. Six. Keep clapping, your hand will never wither. Seven. Oh, come. This is a new day for you. A new day on a new ground. Come. Hurry up. Eight. Yeah, I can see some of you still far away. You have to move a little faster. Keep coming. This is your day. Your day of salvation. Your day of a new beginning. He says, if anybody be in Christ is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Come, come to him. Let him forgive your sins. And let him give you a brand new beginning. Nine. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory be to your holy name. Ten. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I can see, see some of you. Hurry up. Eleven. Thank you, Jesus. Now, those of you who are already in front, will you please talk to the Almighty God? Ask Him to save your soul. Ask Him to have mercy on you. And those of you on the way, keep praying too as you come. And then the rest of all, let's stretch our hands towards our new brothers and sisters and pray that the Almighty God who saved our own souls will save their souls also. Intercede for them. Brethren, let's pray for them for just two minutes. And those of you on the way, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Make sure you get here before I finish praying because I must pray now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Eternal Rock of Ages, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you because you are the Almighty. Thank you because you have proved yourself again. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Look at this, your children, Father. They have come to surrender to you. Please receive them in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray, my Father and my God, that today you will save their souls, Amen. that your blood will wipe away their sins, Amen. that you will write their names in the book of life, Amen. that you will accept them into the family of God. Amen. And Lord, from now, any time they cry unto you, please answer them by fire. Amen. And let them serve you for the rest of their lives. Amen. Thank you, my father. You, now, in a moment, my father and my God, I'm going to ask your children to cry to you for help. Every one of us here today from the east send help to us. Amen. From the west send help to us. Amen. From the north send help to us. Amen. 
from the south, send help to us. Amen. From heaven above, send help to us. Amen. And Father, that person, that individual that has allowed us to use this ground for this program, send help to him. Amen. Oh, Lord God Almighty, answer his own prayers also. Amen. And I am praying, Lord God Almighty, that by this time next year, all your children will be flying. Amen. That whatever has been hindering their progress, my father and my God, be destroyed right now. Amen. Show them that you are the most high God. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Now, those of you in front, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Now, I, I, I'm rejoicing with you because from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer request. The counselors will give you a piece of paper. Kindly fill the information. They will send me a copy, and I promise you, I'll be praying for you. If you need a piece of paper, get one. If you need a pen to write with, ask for one. Uh, but I want you to stay where you are till you finish that and be part of the prayer we're about to pray now. How many of you believe God will do something new here today? They had shown you that the devil may try, but the devil will fail. Uh, he thought he can harass us by sending rain while I'm preaching. He's wasting his time. He doesn't understand. Uh, there is a God who can lift you up to a stage where even the rain will have to obey you. Stand on your feet. If you believe it will answer your prayer today, let me hear you shout hallelujah. And like you have never cried before, lift your voice to the almighty God and say, Father, send help to me. Go ahead, talk to the almighty God. Send help to me physically. Send help to me financially. Send help to me maritally. Send help to me spiritually. Lord, send help to me. Send help to me, O oh Lord.